So, Danny, um, you mentioned when you bought the Monster Factory, and you, you touch on it in the documentary, but kind of tell the journey of how you ended up buying the Monster Factory. Yeah, it was wild, man. It was like um, somebody uh, had had like this wrestling school that they were running. They're like, hey, come on by and, and check it out. And I was like, sure, I'll come by. And like, I haven't talked to these guys in a while. So right. I went and I and I came by and I was just like, oh, this place looks great. And it's all these guys, you know, that invested in this wrestling school themselves. And I'm like, this is cool, guys. And they're like, hey, if you ever want to come by and help coach and stuff, come on by. I was like, oh, that's cool. I haven't been in wrestling in a while. I, I retired a while ago. Retired. I didn't even have a career. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, so, but, just, but just to jump in there, you were yeah, an independent wrestler for many yes, years. Yeah, I wrestled from, the business. Yeah. yeah, I wrestled from like 98 uh, to about 2004 or 5. And then like my back was just shot. I gotcha. had too many things. And, and I had a great paying job, union job. But um, I bumped into them and I, I went over there and. Like, as we're talking and I'm at the school, they're just like, hey, Larry's coming by tonight. And I was like, yeah. And, and he's like, I think he's mad at us. I was like, no, he's not. I was like, if Larry's coming by, he's coming by to do business. I was like, Larry ain't coming by to yell at you. He's like me. He ain't going to bother. Um, and then he came by and went out to dinner and got some drinks. And he's like, who do I talk to? Who's in charge? I was like, I had nothing to do with this. I was like, I'm just here to – I was helping. And he's like, well, if they want to make this a monster factor, you have to be involved because I know you and I trust you with my life. And I was like, all right, are you guys down with it? And they're like, yeah. And then, like, we did the deal. And then, like, those guys were like, yeah, we're going to go do our thing. You go do the Monster Factory because the Monster Factory is dead. And I was like, awesome, cool. Mm -hmm. Me and Larry got this. And then uh, he he retired and was it was done with it about 2014 or 15. Uh, he moved to Florida. Uh, and then, you know, the story goes uh, – I, I don't get into the story after that because, you know, he, he just had some health issues and uh, – I just remember Larry prior to all that. Um, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't good. Um, right. But I still, I still love the guy. I still, I wouldn't be in the position without him, of course, but it was like, uh, it was such a learning process because like when I bought it, it became like, he was like such a mentor prior, but then like, it was like, now that I'm handing it to you, uh, I need you over here. So like I would get done work at like seven or eight and I would go over to Larry's till like four or five in the morning uh, drinking beer and hanging out and just talking wrestling and then have to get up at seven, eight in the morning and go climb telephone poles for a living and then get back and coach again and then do it again and again and then take him to conventions and do this and do that. And and he like really took me under his wing. And every time we'd go in places and meet legends, they'd be like, hey, I want to talk to you about business. He'd be like, Dan's in charge now. He's the guy. You know, this is the guy. He And he was like passing the torch the whole time. So it was uh, it was so surreal to have it happen because I can still remember one time coaching in front of him. He started laughing at me and I, you know, and I have really bad anxiety issues, like super social anxiety issues and, and stuff like that. So now right away, I think my coach that mentored me is crapping all over me. So I turn around and I'm like, what's going on? And he's like, no, 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 nothing. So then he does it again. I'm like, what? And he goes, I'm just laughing. Cause you're saying everything I would say, but you're <laughs> doing it, but you're doing it how you should be doing it now for this crowd. You know what I mean? Because like he realizes like the way he was coaching in the 80s and 90s, he couldn't get away with that. And that right. was a cool thing for him to realize that um, a lot of people would make stories up and tell stories about Larry. But Larry was always a good guy to me. Like he saved me tons of money and heartache. Uh, just a quick story, just to say this, it, it just take two seconds. We were there back in the day. Everybody would leave WCW or WWE and have this idea for this groundbreaking federation. And I remember it was back in the 90s, uh, late 90s, a group left WCW and they were going to start this Urban Wrestling Federation. And they did a tryout <laughs> at the Monster. Right, right. And they did a tryout at the Monster Factory. And I got chosen. And uh, Larry pulls me in the office. He goes, hey, hey, bud, uh, they picked you. Uh, so uh, you're going to leave for L.A. if you want it. But um, you're not going to leave a awesome union job with benefits and all for a federation that's going to crumble in three months are you and i was like no nah. and he goes good i already told him no for you and i was like all right <laughs> and then and then three months later it folded and larry would have got money for that larry gets money for getting people signed so larry turned that money to look out for me so you know if that's a, a if that's a carny and if that's someone who's not a good human then i guess i guess so but i, I think it was pretty cool of him to do you know for a 20 something year old sure. kid 